Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this week's edition of the often imitated but never replicated Syntax News Program for the Now Space News. I'm your host, Colin Jason Hyphen Matthew Colin Glass, and uh, this edition covers the week ending November 26th, 2022, which, uh, if you celebrate Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. If you don't, I hope you had a wonderful week, and I hope you have a lot to be thankful for, as I do. And I try to be grateful every day because every breath is a gift, is it not? This week I have a plethora of headlines for you. It's been a very eventful week. I also have uh, some cultural uh, contributions for you. Uh, It's a book that I'll be doing a little mini review of at the end of the show here and I have uh, updated the name of that section to uh, colon cultural hyphen contribution and uh, that'll come at the end also I have a cognitive conjecture featuring another individual who claims to be titled colon space commander hyphen in hyphen chief I think so without further ado Here comes the headlines. First headline comes from our conspiratorial buddies over at SOT.net. And it says, Mind Matters, Esoteric Christianity, a Glimpse into Theosophia. One of Western Western Christianity's best-kept secrets is its esoteric mystical tradition, starting with Jacob Bohm, in the early 1600s. Well, it's a very interesting illustration there. I think what they're talking about as far as esoteric Christianity is uh, has a lot to do with the fourth way of G.I. Gurdjieff. Um, that is actually the term that G.I. Gurdjieff used to describe the type of religious belief that he followed. Um, but I'm pretty sure that's what they're getting at here. We have a pronoun, standalone, mind matters. We have a break and it continues with the colon there. Then we have adjective esoteric, coloring Christianity into a pronoun. Then we have another break and it continues with the uh, colon. And then adverb A, verb glimpse, adverb in the future tense into modifying theosof- theosophia into a dangling participle verb. And that's definitely the first time I've ever heard of the word theosophia. And I had no idea it was a dangling participle verb. Next headline. Uh, The tensions that fan tricky in-law relationships. Precarious in-law relationships are a trope that that can seem overblown. But for some people, these conflicts are real. And there are many reasons why. We have adverb, verb, adverb, adjective, 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 pronoun. And then down there at the bottom, we have uh, adjective, 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 pronoun. Adverb, verb, adverb, adjective, adjective, pronoun. Pronoun, adverb, adjective, pronoun. Adverb, adjective, adjective, pronoun. Then you see we have a space, a dash, and then a space. So we have... A break in the continuance there, either which way, because we have double spacing, plus a dash, which really has no function there. So that serves as a break in the continuance of the evidence. So therefore, and, the A-N-D, which would usually be considered a conjunction, is not performing its duties as a conjunction. Rather, it is a pronoun. And we know nothing can follow a pronoun except for breaking the continuance of the evidence, or as in this case, an adverb, which is modifying R into a verb. And then many is adverb, reasons, adjective, and then why is a pronoun. And of course, you know, to speak on the headline, this is definitely, if you've been to family gatherings where you have, you know, really in-laws, I'm sure you've experienced this. And this also really doubly so comes into effect when you have families that are affected by divorce. So, yeah, sure. Many reasons why. Let me count the reasons. Next headline. Jeffrey 
victims sue several major banks. Nice use of uh, subtle use of alliteration with the letter S there. We have a bunch of adjectives culminating in a pronoun banks. These victims, whatever, I don't know what they're a victim of in this case. I can kind of guess what it could be. But I'm not quite sure what banks have to do with it. And I am by no means a defender of banks. Not in the least. I'm just trying to logically connect together what a bank would have to do with victims of that man. Next headline. Does kindness get in the way of success? We have adjective, 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 pronoun, adverb, verb, adverb, dangling, participle, verb. And by the way, and I noticed this, I didn't do this in this one, but in the preceding syntaxing, I also did some parsing, and anything you see in yellow is a particle of negation. For example, in this particular one, the letter I in in would be a particle of negation. Uh, the letter O in the word of would be a particle of negation because any vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word is a particle of negation. And also, in the S-U-C-C-E-S-S, -S, the S-U-C is a particle of negation. Now, to address what it's talking about, does kindness get in the way of success? It depends upon what you term as success. What does it mean to you to be successful? To come to a positive performance conclusion. What does that mean to you? I think that kindness in and of itself is success. Uh, definitely. No matter how it's received, if your volition is to be kind, I don't think that there's any avoidance of success in that area. I think you have succeeded tremendously in your performance as a man or a woman if you are kind. So I guess we have to define, we have to give closure to what they mean by success. Do they mean monetary success, fame, uh, you know, the cutthroat business type of Donald Trump thing where you step on people and no matter who gets in your way, it doesn't matter. You screw them over to get to the top. I mean, if that's what they term as success, then that's definitely not something I would ever participate with. And I could give two craps about that. So my answer to this would be, how about no? Next headline. Virginia Walmart shooting. 31-year-old employee Andre Bing accused of killing six people himself. Adjective, adjective, pronoun. Adjective, 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 pronoun in the past tense. Adverb, adjective, adjective, pronoun, and then pronoun. Terrible tragedy. Terrible, 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 terrible tragedy. I don't know too much about this. Um, I do know that I did read there were some warning signs before this happened. Um, I just, you know, my heart goes out to the families of those people and also to the family of Andre Bing. No mother or father ever wants to pick up the phone and hear some sort of news like this. And I think, and this is just my opinion, folks, and hopefully, you know, YouTube will uh, be okay with what I'm about to say. Um, you have to think about the mental condition of state of people who work at a big business like Walmart. The way Walmart treats their employees, uh, the way things are run, in a place like that. And I'm not just talking about that place. I'm talking about any big corporation place. The way they treat their employees. And the discrepancy in pay between the higher ups and someone like this individual. The hours they have to work. The time they have to put in. And the end result at the end of the week when they get that paycheck. I mean... You got to take all those things into consideration when you look at something like this. That's how I feel about it anyways. Next headline. Why some Arabs and Muslims feel stung by coverage of the Qatar World Cup. 
adverb, adjective, adjective, conjunction. Adjective, adjective, pronoun, adverb, adjective, pronoun, adverb, adjective, adjective, pronoun. Um, as some of you may know, I am a beekeeper, uh, a bee steward. And this year alone, I've been stung dozens of times. And it's not a pleasant feeling. It, it hurts, actually. It's very painful. And, you know, your, your skin gets swollen and itchy and painful and things like that. And I wonder, is that how Arabs and Muslims feel about the coverage of the Qatar World Cup? Because if, if that's how they feel about it, then my heart goes out to them. Because being stung is no fun. Next headline. News wrap. Major U.S. airlines warn 5G could ground planes disrupt travel. Wow. This must be old news. Uh, we have adjective pronoun. Breaking and continuance. Adjective, 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 adjective. Adjective future tense could. Adjective pronoun. Adjective pronoun. And then particle of negation, this. Um, 5G could ground planes. I don't know. Does anybody have any uh, intel on that? Anybody have any data on that? Haven't heard much about that of late. I know there was a big, everybody was all like, Ooh, 5G, no scared. And, all, and then that kind of went by the wayside. Uh, maybe because too many other distractions in the news, people forgot about it. Or maybe there really wasn't anything to be worried about. And uh, here we are. Who knows? I myself haven't really seen or noticed a difference. Not really. Not in any way, shape, or form. Other than there seems to be a lot more people out there who are on edge and ready to get angry at, and be offended at anything. And also a lot of people out there who seems to seem to have lost all semblance of logic. There's no logic in their minds when they're thinking about things and how things work. And they just blindly accept whatever they are told if they are told it by a celebrity or some sort of individual that they perceive to be an authority figure. And it's almost sort of like reminds me of uh, religious zealots. Only instead of religion... Their zealotism comes from science. Time for your weekly now space syntax lesson. News wrap. New York City opens temporary housing site for migrants. Let's mark up the particles of negation. We got the vowel in front of the consonant here. We have the ing modifier, and then we have future tense 4. Now for the syntax. News wrap is an adjective pronoun. Then we have New York City, which is a name... Adjective, adjective, pronoun, opens is non-tangible contract adverb, modifying temporary into an adjective. Housing is an adjective, which is coloring site into a pronoun. For is future tense adverb. And then migrants is a dangling participle verb. And that does it for your live syntax lesson for the week. Next up, we have some memes for you to tickle your funny bone. I know this was true in a lot of households I've seen. Next one has to do with uh, yesterday, which is termed Black Friday. Is that true or is it not true? And the final one. What is wrong with this picture? Are you kidding me? Really? 
Shame on you, Superman. Shame on you, Kal-El. This week's cultural contribution comes from $2 Radio Books, I think is the name of it. Uh, yeah, $2 Radio Books. Uh, and it's a novel written and illustrated by J.D. Wilkes. If I'm not mistaken, he is a Kentuckian. And he's probably more well-known as a musician. Um, he's got the Shack Shakers band that he's in that he uh, sings lead vocals and plays mouth harp. He's also quite an accomplished uh, banjo picker. And uh, I think he also played with Hank Williams III. But uh, this is a book called The Vine That Ate the South. I think it's from about four years ago. I just got it. And it is great. It's great because the idea behind it, it's an independent book publisher, first of all. And it's written and illustrated by J.D., I mean, and J.D. says it in an interview that he got the inspiration for this book because of some of the Southern mythologies that he had been exposed to, uh, you know, talking about the Lord of the Rings and things like that. And he said, well, we have our own myths right here in the South. And this is one of them, the vine that ate the South. And it goes through all sorts of different southern mythologies all sorts of them it's very well written very thoughtful uh the guy's vocabulary i don't know if he if he walks around talking like this or if he had a thesaurus sitting next to him but either which way the guy i think is a very colorful author and i would highly recommend this book to anyone who likes to read fiction that also has a bit of history to it the Vine That Ate the South, J.D. Wilkes. My recommendation. Next up for the cognitive conjecture, uh, it's from a channel called Colon Space Commander and Colon Space Chief, which basically means of the commander and of the chief, which if you follow my channel, you know that this is not correct sentence structure. Because every correct sentence structure must start with a cause, a for the. And the for the is represented by the colon being tied up against the fact that it precedes. And in this case, if this was to be correct, if it was to say for the commander and for the chief, it would be colon C, you know, colon commander, space, ampersand, space, colon, chief, period. That's the correct way to write it. So whoever you are, whoever wrote that, I just told you how to correct it. It's up to you to follow through. So let's see what this is all about. Let's, let's, oh, this guy, let's hear what this guy has to say. We must learn how to communicate. Correct communication parsing syntax grammar. Correct communication parsing syntax grammar. I don't know what that is. I know what correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar. Let me say that again. Correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar. I know what that is, but what he just said, I don't know what that is. And quantum grammar is a way that we can peacefully learn how to get our needs. So he's saying that quantum grammar and whatever that other name was that he said is a way to get our needs what? I don't know is a singular. So I'm thinking that quantum grammar is synonymous with the other term that he used. But let's hear what this fella has to say. Hello guys. So in this video, as you've just seen, you will just heard Russell stating that correct sentence structure communication. Ah, no, he did not say that. Uh, whoever you are. He did not say that. He did not say correct sentence structure communication parsley syntax grammar. He didn't say correct sentence structure. He said correct communication parsley syntax grammar. So perhaps you misheard it. I don't know. Uh, perhaps you know, working, uh, studying up on your forensic skills would help, but he did not say that. 
Um, so it's never good to make a claim for someone else. And by the way, I'm not making a claim that this gentleman misheard it. I'm guessing that he misheard it. I'm trying to think up reasons why he would think that Russell said something that he didn't say. He clearly didn't say correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. He clearly said something else, but this man's sort of putting words in his mouth, in Russell's mouth. So I digress. Let's move on. And quantum grammar must learn to communicate. I'm, I'm telling you. Like... Russell certainly did not say anything like that. See, volition is a very important part of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, ladies and gentlemen. If it's your volition to be cognized, comprehended, understood, then you give the other individual, the other communicating contract party, every chance in the world to express and articulate their meanings, what they're trying to convey. This instance right here, Russell was clearly saying, he used the verb is in his adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. He said, correct communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, and quantum grammar is a way, blah, 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 meaning it's one thing. It's not two things, learning to communicate with one another. They're both synonymous with one another. The key is the verb is. But again, this individual appears to be not hearing the same thing that I heard. But of course, it's always a chance that I misheard it. But I don't think I did because I watched it three times before I recorded this. So I'm pretty sure I heard what came out of Russell's mouth. Like I told other departments two years ago, I will never communicate with this fraud. He, if he wants to do this quantum grammar stuff that he wants to do, then by all means, go ahead. Right ahead and do it because you're not compromising anything I'm doing. Or anything that I'm in control of. Control, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, he just used the word control. Control has a particle of negation in it, contra, number one. Number two, control implies that you're making something do something against its will. You're controlling something. You're forcing something to do something. I'm not just pulling this out of thin air. Look it up. War negates contract. Control negates contract. That's why I don't ever use that word, ever. Because contract is by consent, and I never want to force anyone to do anything against their will. Correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar is the only thing that is tied by copyrights, by weights and measures, to the title for a flag. Quantum grammar, Santa Claus, fucking dope, you name it. Then they are ah, I see this feller's using some foul language. I'm going to have to cut that out. No connection to Title IV. We heard from the horse's mouth back in 2020 that there's two systems and they must learn to communicate and use these systems. No. No, that's not what he said at all. That is definitely not what he said. So I'm not sure what this individual's volition is. I don't know if they're using or perhaps, and this is speculation on my part. Keep in mind speculation. I'm guessing this is a news show. This is opinion. Um, I'm speculating that this individual is for some unknown reason, maybe not fully hearing what Russell's saying or is purposely sort of twisting Russell's words for his own agenda, which that isn't really uh, relevant to me because what I do is I use correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, i.e. quantum grammar. Both of those things, both of those things are represented by the title for flag, which is open for anyone to use that has the knowledge to use it. Anyone who can create a correct sentence structure using the mathematical interface on grammar that Colin David Eiffelwin Colin Miller brought to the public many years ago. He termed it quantum grammar and he also termed it correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar. They're sort of synonyms. Quantum grammar is a way to describe 
correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar is what it actually is. Okay? That's like saying perhaps earth is earth and then you use the word planet to describe it. I don't know if that's a weak analogy or not, but that's kind of how I look at it. So I don't, I'm not really sure what this guy's getting at. I think it's tied to whatever he's trying to do business-wise with his websites and his constructs that he does. Uh, sort of pulling stuff out of thin air, sort of putting words in people's mouths and things like that. Uh, but again, you know, it's just I'm just making people aware of it. Just be very cautious uh, when you get involved with things like this. That about wraps it up for this week's edition of For the Now Space News. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments. If you want to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email below at the bottom of your screen, and I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation with you to talk about it. Either that, or you can study the close to 500 videos on this YouTube channel, uh, which contain the stum. The sum total of my correct sentence structure knowledge free to you my gift to my fellow mankind there are also two tiers of membership that you can check out just click the join button below for more information on that and again anything I discuss on here is my opinion it's my take on things anything except for the grammar when I'm talking about syntax and par se uh, that you can take as fact um, that's not an opinion that's something you can look up and certify it for yourself but anything else it comes out of my mouth. It's just my opinion. It's my stance on things. Um, for educational and entertainment, uh, knowledge cultivation purposes only. Thank you for joining me, and I will see you next week.